Welcome to the Abnormally Funny People Show, sponsored by Barclays. For further information, please visit abnormallyfunnypeople.com. We hope you enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the Abnormally Funny People podcast. I'm Steve Best. Hello and I'm Simon Minty. We're back from our holidays. Did you have a good time, Steve? Yes, I did, Simon. I had a very good time. I was away for five weeks, all in all. I remember it well. Yeah. Uh, Abnormally Funny People was very busy. <laughs> what, did you, what did you do? Where did you go? Well, I spent a couple of weeks in Croatia. Uh, near Dubrovnik with the family, Very with, nice. with uh, actually my brothers as well and their families, 14 of us. In That's a, a big group. It was a big group. Yeah. Uh, and then we uh, spent another three weeks in Montenegro. Yeah. And you, you went on holiday? Uh, I did. I went, I've talked about this before, conventions, Little People of America conventions. This one was in San Diego in California. Uh, unbelievably amazing hotel. About 2,000 of us again. Yeah. Uh, did my usual first day or two, completely overwhelmed. But <laughs> I went and found people I really love and just sort of hugged them and sort of just found my feet for a day or you two. You found your people? Yes. Is that your... Yeah. Uh, well, they're all my people. Oh, but no. when you're suddenly with 2,000 of your people, it can be a bit <laughs> overwhelming. But no, it's good. And the best bit was having short people surfing. Oh, just yeah. unbelievable. There was like 50 of us out in the water surfing away. Uh, I'm you did still... it. You did it. I didn't. I don't have any balance on a good day. So the idea of then going up on a surfboard. I should have done it, though, because I had so much support. The, the team who were teaching us were really cool. It, you know what? I was happy to be proud. And loads of people got up. If you've got a conjoplasia, which is the most common form, you have really good balance. So these people were jumping up on uh, surfboards in no time at all. But you could do a lot of life flat one as well, couldn't you? That's the beginning. Begin- no, you one see, I've got to overcome it because... You could have done, and that would have been fine just to be... That's what people said, just to be taken in by the wave is yeah. brilliant. But there was me going, but that's a bit rubbish. Do I'm doing it, I want to do it properly. But yeah. I should have I should have let that go and gone for it. You, but you've got a bit of slight fear of falling in as well, of, of swimming. You not Drowning. Of, well, <laughs> <laughs> of trying to breathe underwater. But you're, you, you're not... You're a swimmer. You swim. I can swim. You swim, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not okay. strong, but I can... Because years ago, do you remember in, in Philippines, me and you, our boat... <laughs> boat capsized. Is this your moment of the month? <laughs> no, yes, I, I do remember, remember this. Yeah. Go on, no, go oh, on. You got, I can't remember you got you got really scared. I mean, I was pretty scared, but you got really scared. I yeah, mean, the boat was going under, wasn't it? And so this a... was sunset yeah. off the island of Boracay. Yeah. We were as far out we could only just see, and this little catamaran that sank. And it was I sinking, can't wasn't it? And I remember you going, "Where's my camera? Where's my camera?" And I'm like, "We're gonna die! <laughs> We're gonna die!" <laughs> it was horrendous. And do you remember there's a big ferry yes. next to us? Yeah, that's a huge ferry. That... Yeah, and it was. We were we were saying we're drowning, and they all thought we were waving. Yeah. Uh, do you remember that motorboat came and picked us up? And they said, "You idiots! What are you doing out this far?" Well, it was our guide, wasn't it? it wasn't our fault. You're right. It was a guide. That yeah. was. I was scared then. I can't believe you yeah. brought that up. I, did, I didn't Old mean chestnut. to. Yeah. So San Diego was great fun, a little bit more fun than the Philippines, definitely. Um, how are we doing? Let's talk some numbers. Listeners, how are we getting on? You'll never believe this. Uh, we've had 2,200 listens so far. Uh, maybe more now. I do uh, believe after today. Okay. And uh, another 100 or so on YouTube. And, of course, we had the uh, you were in The Guardian, uh, uh, Mr Minty. You were profiled in, um, in The Guardian. There was. There was that little piece. Um, a little piece? It was a full-page spread, that was. We will speak about that. Uh, yeah. And what about the competition? Because every month we offer all our products as prizes. Competition. Big news, Mr Minty. We have a winner. That is fantastic. Uh, how many people entered? The important thing is, Mr Minty, is that we have a winner. Oh, <laughs> OK. Uh, actually, Debbie. Debbie's the winner. She's from London, and uh, she came up uh, with a, the answer to the muggy. Do you remember the muggy, that, that tray, the plastic tray? Yeah. That carried more than one cup if you didn't... Four cups you could get in that. Yeah, OK. Yeah. yeah, We all like that. Uh, she said, I want the muggy because I only have use of one hand, so can only carry one drink at a time. And as the drinks machine is at the other end of my office at work, it takes ages for me to get anyone but myself a drink. This would save me a lot of time and also please my work colleagues. Happy! Exclamation mark. And that's what won it. Well done, Debbie. The muggy tray is on your way, maybe with you now. Uh, and we'll have another competition uh, this month after we've seen the products. Great stuff. Um, if, in case you're new to the podcast, uh, we release this on the first Sunday of each month, sometimes a day or two either side of that. Um, if you or you know other people who prefer to read it, we have a transcription that goes up on the same day as we release it. Uh, so set your diary or even better, just subscribe.
We'd love to hear from you. It was great having Debbie write to us. So um, even if it's not for the competition, you can write to us about anything. Uh, and we'll um, so, something we could review or anything else. Uh, and um, don't forget to review us if you like the show. Five stars, maybe five and a half. You can email us. Uh, the email address is podcast at abnormally funny people. And we're in the usual places, Facebook and Twitter. This week's show is going to be a little bit busy, I think, Mr. Best. Uh, busy? What do you mean by busy? Lots of people. We've got lots of people. No, no, no. We're just the two performers. Both of our guests are performers, uh, both involved in comedy and um, forms of entertainment. And both disabled? Yes, that's the bit where I think it's uh, going to be busy. Um, we have Lawrence Clark, and he's a well-established stand-up. We also have Jess Tom, who uh, has her own show called Tourette's Hero. The, I suppose the unique bit, and this is tell, bearing in mind we're a disability thing, but they, they have their own speech stuff going on. Um, and they have some certain speech difficulties and so on, the communication. Yet, their job is to stand up in front of people and talk to them. That's very good. I, I, I know Lawrence. I haven't, I've met Lawrence lots of times. Obviously, he's done the show with us. Yeah. Um, but I've never met Jess, so that would be great. Um, they're coming up next. And so, uh, lovely listener, uh, we have a little warning as well. We had a little chat with Jess, and um, because of her Tourette's, it means they're involuntary noises and words. And uh, so there may be occasionally uh, some swear words that come out in the show, which you will be able to tell they're her involuntary bits. We're not going to bleep them out, and we're not going to edit it down. So... Uh, we hope you love the, the, the pure joy of our show in its entirety and we'll, we'll see how we go. Welcome to our guests on this month's Abnormally Funny People show. First up is Jess Tom. It's Santa. Jess is co-founder of Tourette's Hero. She's an artist, play worker and expert fundraiser. Biscuit. Jess has had tics since she was a child but Biscuit. wasn't diagnosed Biscuit. with Tourette's until she was in her 20s. Hello. Jess decided to turn Biscuit. her tics into a source of imaginative... Crea- I can't say that. Imaginative creativity. And Create. the Tourette's Hero project was born. Welcome, Ta-da. Jess. Hello. Welcome. Fuck a goat. And we also have Lawrence Clark. Lawrence is a comedian, presenter, writer and actor who has cerebral palsy. He's performed everywhere from the House of Commons to a double-decker bus in Sheffield. And he's had numerous solo shows at the Edinburgh Fringe. Aladdin. He's appeared on the BBC, ITV, Channel 4 and was the subject of a major BBC One documentary called... We won't drop the baby. Oh, so hi, guys. So let's kick off with Hedgehog. our regular feature. Uh, it's called Moment of the Month. Jess, Hedgehog. have you got a Moment of the Month? Biscuit. My first Moment of the Month was the Unlimited Festival at the South Bank. Biscuit, yes. Which was a showcase of new work by disabled artists and performers. Biscuit. And I was lucky enough to be taking part um, alongside um, loads of amazing um uh, shows. Biscuit didn't, you head- head- didn't you headline that show? Like Biscuit, I'm not sure I headlined, but I did take part in a late night cabaret called That's, Unlimited yes. Unleashed, which was put together by Liz Carr. Biscuit, um, and I've been listening and watching Liz's work for years. Biscuit, and I first saw her Biscuit at the Liberty Festival. Biscuit, yeah. um, uh, several years ago. Biscuit, and it was um, I remember sitting watching Liz Carr, and Matt Fraser at the Liberty Festival, um, do something. Quite similar, like in terms of star, style to what happened at Unlimited. And it was um, eye-opening for me. And it was the first time, Biscuit, I felt comfortable and included watching a show without risking being part of it. And so for me, it was amazing being part of that show. It was amazing watching it. Um, Biscuit and the whole festival had a really Biscuit um, inclusive feeling. And um, my, the only sadness is that um, it's a biennial festival and that, that it doesn't happen more often. I don't know, but I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was, it was annual. Is it biannual now? Unlim- the biannual, unlimited is biannual. Yeah, yeah. Ah. biscuit. Um, and um, so I think biscuit. And you know, anyone who's been to the South Bank, it's not the most accessible building. Yeah. Um, but what created the inclusive feeling about that event, biscuit, was um, was the approach taken by the South Bank staff. Was the was the joy and the humour and the quality of the um, of the shows that had been. Put on biscuit, um, but particularly with un- with the uh, cabaret Unlimited mm. Unleashed biscuit, which um, uh, biscuit which included a freaks flash mob with all the performers biscuit um, chanting um, "Google Gobble" from the nineteen thirty two film Freaks, which was incredible. <laughs> biscuit Hedgehog, um, the biscuit one of the the things that made that made that 
amazing the biscuit the, the thing that made that particularly amazing was that everybody was trying something new um and so there was loads of just really crazy ideas thank you jess lawrence uh moment of the month Hello. Uh, okay <laughs> so my first Catch one actually involves jess Ta-da! Oh. <laughs> um, so um, i'm stretching the definition of a month okay <laughs> To, to involve August. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. And, Last month. Yeah. So, um, we were both at the Edinburgh Fringe. And I went to see Jesse's show. Biscuit. Which was um, Biscuit. amazing. It, it was great. It involved an ice skating panda. I didn't know <laughs> that bit. <laughs> Not sure I did. <laughs> I, I'm annoyed I've missed that show. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I was watching it kind of partly in the back of my head, thinking, okay. um, then you my son Tom, whose line was coming up. Yeah. And kind of looking for things to take him to that, that he would like. Ketchup. Apart yeah. from the odd bit about masturbation. Which yeah. <laughs> it was over quite quickly. It has a it just Ketchup. go over his head. Um, What's that? The masturbation bit when I was. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, apart from that, I thought, yeah. I, I, um, Steve, you've got kids. I've right? got kids. Yeah. And do you find that the things your kids want to watch are the things with kind of 15 certificates and things that they're not supposed to watch? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. the minute you. Um, I don't care they can't watch something. Hedge. I just wait for them want to watch Hello. it all the more. Cats. So, I didn't let him watch my show. Hedge. Because my show involved me at Hedge. one point shouting the C word. And I thought, that's not a conversation I want to have yeah. at Hedge. nine years old. Um, but, I uh, I let him watch just the show um, and he Catch. loved it. Um, she got him up on stage um, to read out Hedge. some some kind of medical jargon. My care plan, yeah. Yeah, which will probably scar him for the rest of his life. <laughs> <laughs> In 20 years' time, if we rocked him backwards and forwards on a psychiatrist's couch. <laughs> Talking yeah, at the time, this woman got him up on stage. He, but did, but he did know how to say the word uh, diazepam, which he was did. very <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Which, Interesting. The, the, adult, the, the adult the day before had really struggled with that word, that, and he uh, just nailed it. What did comes you? to having disabled parents? <laughs> 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 it's very familiar. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> but then, uh, afterwards, uh, you gave him a T-shirt, and, and he loved <laughs> it, and... And and then he started saying biscuit. Hedgehog biscuit. And then I, I thought I was okay with that. I thought, but yeah, that that's that's you know, uh, kids like to imitate, don't Hedgehog. they? Then he started doing the tick, <laughs> and I thought, oh, I'm not quite, I'm not quite comfortable biscuit. with biscuit. that. Which what? Which one? Like chess manual? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. To say biscuit and, <laughs> and, and, and banging the chess. I, 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 when I thought about it, it, it wasn't malicious. It, it was a. Uh, it, it was like I think he was really interested in you yeah. having watched the show, and, and invitation is a form of factory. And he's nine. You say he's yeah, nine years yeah. old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We we do get Hedgehog. really. I mean, understandably, Hedgehog. sometimes we do get hit up about simulation. Yeah. <laughs> non disabled people copying us. Yeah. Biscuit. But the Hedgehog, I think my feeling with stuff like that is if kids if kids see something that's interesting to them, Biscuit, whether that's a disabled person mm. or an interesting hat or a, something that they haven't seen before, like they. They want to know more about it. They yeah. want to, you know, biscuit. Sometimes kids do learn by, by by copying stuff, and some of that's trying to work out how it feels. I biscuit. I work with children, so I'm you like, like them simulating ticks is something that happens quite often, particularly toddlers on buses. Yeah. They, 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 you know, they obviously think I'm just doing it for their amusement, and because 
because I've, I'm a wheelchair user, I'm often sat next to a child in a buggy who is just absorbed by the noises I'm making. But there's, and a, but there's a fine... So are we, so are we. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it goes. I, just when we were coming in... Um, but this, this thump that you do, I don't know, do you call it a thump? Yeah, thump, uh, thump is a good word. <laughs> and I know we were prepping for the show and Steve said something and I, and I went, yeah, yeah, we're all right, and I thump myself. And I'm like, what am I doing? And is this rude or... or and, but it, it, it's something that I do... Is it hurt? Get, not her. You just get bruised. I'm, I'm, my chest bruised for about the first three months, and, right. then, it, and then it gave Tardy. up. And I wear padded gloves to stop my knuckles getting I wondered. cracked and okay. bloody. But I think let's get. I think there there is a let's get Matthew, the co-founder of Tourette's Hero. When we first started Tourette's Hero, let's get he was explaining the idea to a, a, a friend of mine who has Tourette's, and let's get loads of people copy Tourette's. There's loads of videos by yeah, okay. by, by people without Tourette's on YouTube, like. Mm. Once I've had millions of hit of people pretending to have ticks and biscuit and for, you know for the the amusement of their friends mm. biscuit and Matthew described to my friend Ruth the idea that he would he hoped that Tourette's Hero would create a time where people were pretending to have Tourette's or emulating ticks not because they were taking the Mickey mm. but because they were identifying that it was interesting and cool and creative yeah, and yeah. they wanted a bit of that and the behaviour was the same but the motivation was completely different. It's but, quite a fine line though, isn't it? Biscuit, I mean, it's like my kids with you. Um, known you a long time. So if you haven't heard, I'm sure I'm um, say three foot eleven, one meter twenty. Yeah. So so so, but they're the same size as me. Yeah, but they're, my oldest one now always yeah. says I'm I'm taller than you now. And yeah. So you, I trip her over there. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't. <laughs> and uh, but but I was saying that that when you're on the street, when you get kids looking at you in a different kind of way or, or teasing, I'm not teasing, but there is a fine line between. Imitation. You or, say it's a fine line, but yeah. I actually don't ever experience it as a fine line, and it's the same with laughter. This get I feel like people like I'm used that people have laughed at my ticks for years, mm -hmm. and I've had people and I've had people laugh with my ticks for years, and I always know the difference between someone laughing yeah. at me and laughing with me, and it's the same as looking. Um, that, okay. Just came to, to my show. It is bravery. Was she laughing at the wrong reasons? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we talked about it beforehand. Yeah. We, we agreed that I would introduce her right at the start Cat. so that people were aware Hedge. of how, how this performance was going to work. Um, uh, Tap but, dancing now. And, and, I still say it's one of the best shows I've ever done. I, I, I'm not often heckled. I, I'm, yeah. I'm never quite sure. Or what, why that is, um, but what, it just is it, it was like being heckled, but biscuit heckled. You were finishing my sentence, <laughs> Aladdin, in in, in in weird and wonderful ways, <laughs> really surreal ways. Yeah, you, you rewrote your show that night, yeah, and then you kept yeah, yeah, them yeah, in. yeah. <laughs> biscuit, but I think what it really, biscuit, what what you, what biscuit, my experience of watching co watching comedy has sometimes been very difficult, and I've been made to feel quite uncomfortable and like the the sort of target or the focus of the show biscuit rather than just an audience member and what what was amazing about seeing lawrence's show and lots of other comedians where they're skilled uh, is that it just make like they respond in a way that is natural and funny yeah, biscuit, yeah, and yeah. Their, their natural <laughs> comic ability is really shines so i think people don't need to be frightened of having having an inclusive approach so i read your blog lawrence yeah. about the show that jess came to which kind of put Cats. it all together though jess you're everywhere at the moment you're kind of i'm not in none head right now no you're right <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I i'm not i'm not inside a camel's testes that's the post-show party mm -hmm. uh so I, and I read it, and it was the joy you saying, Lawrence. That was one of the best shows I did. The heckles were sometimes better than my own material, and there was a, just a, a lovely thing going on. But, but I have to ask the the, the question, Hedge. which sounds trite now. But the both of you are doing performance. You are standing Hedge. up in front of people doing your stuff, and both of you have got stuff going Hedge. on with language stuff. Biscuit, so thank you. That's probably the right answer. Uh, I take that I on board. I don't know. Are you being what we call super crips? Are you just sort of overdoing it? You say, "What the hell?" Look, I can't. or is it like? Is it a calling? You have to do it. The comedians say, "I have. I can't do anything else. This is what I'm about." A biscuit for, for for me. Biscuit talking to people 
so talking to people about Tourette's and talking to people about my experience is is a daily tool of living, whether that's on the bus or whether that's you know in an interview or on stage. Biscuit, it's useful because people having an increased understanding, Biscuit makes a tangible difference to my experience. So it feels worth doing. And also, Biscuit, lots of Biscuit, my use of language is funny and weird and it's sharing great. that and in, it feels feels really good to be able to sh uh, and to be able to invite people with and without Tourette's and with and without disabilities to to think about that and enjoy that feels feels natural to me I've got another moment moment of course you have because <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I've listened to the podcast um, thank you you're the one um, yeah and this is this is Hello. the point in the show that you talk about air travel <laughs> hey, that's my moment of the month. Oh, no, it might be clash. Uh, uh, okay, go on, go on. <laughs> Just a bit to my head. And everyone, everyone. So, so um, after Edinburgh, Hedge. I went on holiday Hedge. to Sharm El Sheikh. <laughs> to shake him back. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> and um, put the freshness back in the pan. Uh, two things Hedge. about it. First thing, because it was somewhere I've been before, Hedge. but I before I booked with a Hedge. accessible like kind of disabled people's travel okay. agent. Yep. And it was really nice and great and accessible. But it cost a fortune. So this time, I bought the same hotel and the same flight, yeah. but I did it myself. Mm -hmm. And admittedly, there was a bit of a language barrier. And for a long time, I thought I'd booked two rooms where I'd only bought one room. And had we not spotted this, it would have been... A surprise when we drive. <laughs> um, but <laughs> it worked out about fifty hundred quid cheaper. <gasps> so that, that was like a ma I knew we were always moaning about massive markups on, on products and services for Hedge. for disabled people. And and yeah, was it easier was it, though? Was I it mean, worth it in the stress? Though? Was that's it my bit. Yes, exactly. Um, for 1500 quid, it probably was. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is a hell of a lot of money. Marmoset. About a thousand, you... about a thousand. <laughs> give, give us a price. <laughs> okay, so before Steve and I do our moments of the month, we, we're going to lose Lawrence. He's got to get a train back to Liverpool. So Hedgehog. we're going to do a Hopefully little... Hopefully not a plane back. You're not getting a plane back. <laughs> we're going to do uh, his product review before before he goes. So, um, Lawrence, we didn't send the items this time. We were all It's all just a bit rushed, this. Uh, this whole show is all a bit rushed. But you have got the product. Uh, and, I mean, just give me your initial impressions or maybe describe Hedgehog. it for people who are listening. What is it? And... Uh, so it's white, it's metal... Uh, there's a handle that, 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 that you squeeze, and that squeezes two round things, and it's got some sharp blades that come up as well, and it is an egg cracker and separator. It's from okay. Pac-Man. You can do that, but the, the description of it is... Um, uh, effortlessly cracks eggs uh, in one single-handed motion. Sing. And it keeps shell pieces out of your food mixtures, keeps egg content away from hands. The problem is, I effortlessly crack eggs. And, when you anyway. don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about the separating of the, um, the, of the yolk, the eggs, the white um, egg white? Yeah, they're all separate everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they're they're everywhere. Shop, yeah? Separate all over your head. <laughs> With yeah, one hand motion, Lawrence. Some of it separates into the bowl, some of it doesn't. <laughs> but this is what this is what I was saying to you, Simon. Is that uh, when I crack an egg, do you crack an egg on the table or on the on the yeah, on the pan? I, I usually just drop it <laughs> into, a great height. into a bowl. I I tend to use head or chest. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Yeah. I use so you always bang with your. Right with, hand. Yeah, I bang with both hands, but... So you could put an egg in each hand. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> eggs tend to go just straight on my scalp. 
Oh, I use a knife. Don't tell they're fried. Lawrence is quite happy to stay for another five minutes now. <laughs> now, now, now we found the <laughs> level. Egg to tit. The, the egg to tit ratio is more exciting than a Band-Aid sticker. So this, uh, this might. So who's this for? It's not for Lawrence then. No. No, but it's it, it it's for it's, it, on their on their bits. It's for anyone. It's for anyone. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but bits of bits of shell in bits of shell in food is a I, bit of a pain. I okay. Can, I can see how if you had difficulty cracking <laughs> eggs, which yeah. I don't, um, then th- this would be very useful. Would you would you think of any changes to it? Is there anything you would change on it? I uh, have never wristband. used it and tried it. Well, you can't make it on that. <laughs> <laughs> Alan. Uh, no, no, I mean, it seems to work pretty. I do, I, I've not actually tried it. Yeah, so that's no, a bit. true. If we did have some eggs, that was our fault. Um, th- then we'd have a messy ah. studio. <laughs> um, but, but but yeah, it seems to work. work. Quite and it's well. it's, it's, it's cost you. Thing. We're going to rate it. It's going to cost you ten pounds. That's going to cost you ten pounds of your hard-earned money. And if you were to rate it out of ten. Uh, Lawrence, what do you give out of ten? Uh, I I I love eggs, so eight out of ten. <laughs> Jess, it's, it's it's difficult it's difficult to rate something without seeing it doing its actual yes, job. Yes, that's but helpful. But for 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 the idea, seven out of ten. Nice, thank you. Hedgehog, some, see best. Some, uh, okay, I'd go I'd go for seven. Alan. I like it. Uh, I dramatic content. No, I'm not going to say that I never spill shell because it's always going to happen to me from now on. I, I think you're right. I want to give it a try, but yeah. principle uh, seven. I'll tell you what I think would really is is to separate the egg, uh, the egg white. If you're if you're yeah, doing some kind cooking, of baking. proper cooking, which yeah. I never really do, but yeah. if great, I was to do that, I think that's what's good for. Tin tin off. Yes. It's like Great British Bake Off, but with tin tin in a microwave. That would work. I'm liking it. Yeah. Oh, Seven out of ten for that. I would watch that. <laughs> <laughs> so is that 7778? 7778. Hello. Thank you so much, Lawrence. Pretty good. As you, you're you going to go, what, where, what, what are you doing next? Where can we see you? Uh, I, I'm going to have a break from gigging at the moment. Um, so I'm writing a pilot sitcom nice. called Perfect. Perfect. For Radio 4 at the moment. Cool. And then next few gigs, um, Moment of Instant Regret, my, um, my Edinburgh show is... Um, I'm not touring yet, so, but I'm doing it at Dada Fest on the 5th Hedgehog. of December. Is that Liverpool? That's in Liverpool. Yeah. And then at Leicester Hedgehog. Comedy Festival at Embrace Arts in February. Hedgehog. And hopefully Soho Theatre as well cool. in February. Hedgehog. We're just doing a few dates so that people that didn't get Hedgehog. to see at Edinburgh can catch up Hedgehog. with it. Mummies. Lovely. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Thank Lovely you so much you. for coming, Cheers. Lawrence. Thanks a lot. Hello, biscuit. Bye bye, Lawrence. Biscuit. Bye. D- don't, don't put a sheep inside the otter's pajamas. <laughs> uh, so, Simon, you said you've got a, a second moment of the month, Mr. Minty. Hello. So, uh, I went to buy a bike. I thought I'd been trying to lose a bit of weight and doing some other healthy things, and the, one of them was to do cycling. It's an exercise uh, bike or a bike? No, a bike to go on the, the road. OK. Uh, as I've Sand. explained, I am short, so... Uh, and also, I don't have any balance, so it had to be a three-wheeler bike. Hedgehog. A tricycle, I think they're called. These are really hard to find. I spent a lot Hedgehog. of time. There are some disabled websites that kind of Hedgehog. point you in the right direction, but there was another one that's sort of a handmade type thing, uh, and... I went to the shop that's in Great Hedgehog. Portland Street F- in central Cats. London. Uh, I phoned 12 different bike shops. None of them had them. And I wanted to go and try it. Otherwise, they're saying, oh, you order it and they deliver it. And I'm like, well, that's no good. I, I need to give it a try. The shop were fabulous. Um, they were with me for about 40 minutes. And we put different saddles on. We moved things different around. I should descri- describe the bike. This is the problem, which is it's really small, obviously. It's a child's tricycle. Uh, it's bright yellow, uh, and then it's got big bright red mudguards on all the wheels, and obviously it's got and he's got a little front brake as well. Um, 
And I then went out in the street. They let Ed. me have a little go around, and I was just. By the way, my legs don't move very well, so this was quite Ed. problematic as well and painful. And there was one point when I tried to turn around, I couldn't turn around. I, I just on the pavement, I couldn't turn the bike and Tricycles pedal. Tricycles are hard to ride. Apparently think... only one wheel drives it, and I turned Ed. the wrong way. Uh, and then there was people standing Ed. outside the BBC, should, should we give you a push? And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. I said, I've got to learn, I've got to learn. I'm like, I'm a 40-year-old man who's trying to say I've got to learn how to ride this. 46. 70... Yeah, well, I meant 40 years, uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, but uh, it Technical was... detail. I showed it to my colleague Ed. Phil, and he got really angry with me. He sort of said, what are you using that? What the hell? And, da, da, da. and I said, I want to use it. He said, just get an exercise bike. And, da, da, da. and he called me the next day and he apologised. And he said, I had flashbacks. I had flashbacks to special school, yeah. kids with disabilities being put on these things that weren't appropriate. And he couldn't bear it. So his anger was actually very supportive of me. Uh, the interesting telling bit, they were great. Really, I didn't buy it in the end because I knew it wasn't quite right and I'm going to have to look at maybe get my own one made for me. They said, we've just sold a bike to Andrew Marr recently. Uh, Andrew Marr is a BBC presenter who had a stroke yeah. maybe a year or two ago and he's just started riding again so they had to sort of adapt a bike slightly Petra. for him. So, well, why, would he, uh, uh, why would he need a tri tricycle but Andrew Marr? I th it might have been. That's, I'm trying to remember. He hasn't got use of his left arm. Oh, okay. I think he's got some limited Petra. stuff now. But um, I seem to, I, Were they expen more expensive? But... This Because it's a sort of for... custom made for, for children. I mean, it still comes in one size, Petra. but it was about £400. Okay. So I don't know. I mean, it didn't sound outrageous for a bike. No. Because there's an amazing organisation, Biscuit, called Wheels for Wellbeing. I don't know if you've come across them, but they I have. Need to. Biscuit, they are. Um, they've got loads of different accessible bikes. They're based in London, and um, they are about cycling, accessible cycling. And yes, okay. And you can go and um, Biscuit. They've got sessions. I know they've got sessions in the borough where I work. Biscuit in Lambeth and in Croydon. I've taken groups of kids to them, and yeah, all loads of different. Do you types think they have a bike for people like me? Um, I think it'd be worth getting in touch with them Good and asking answer. them because yeah, if they yeah. don't, if they don't, they might have an idea where you, where and you can just. It's great because it's just. A great, I love it because it's you can go and try loads of different bikes, but they've got they've got loads of different types, and I think they're quite creative in sourcing them. So there's a little bit which, and we, we've spoken to some of the listeners and some of them, but that. Uh, how do I explain it? I had to go to a meeting Petra. afterwards, and so I had a proper jacket on and shirt and everything. Uh, and as Steve said, I'm a 46-year-old man. Uh, on Cat. this seven-year-old child's bike uh, with all these bright colours trying to go up and down the street. And the bit of this Petra. dignity thing, how do you retain your dignity being a disabled part person? And sometimes you can't. Mm. I, for me, in my head, I'm like, Petra. I don't care if everyone's going to look because what I'm trying to Petra. do is find a bike. We'd already decided we're going to respray it, we'd take all those mud guards off, there'd be a whole load of things that I would change. Yeah. But there was this Petra. moment of I had no dignity, particularly when I'm trying to turn and I can't move the bike <laughs> back and forth in central London. But you're like... But that's oh. like, but wouldn't that be... Kind of anybody trying to learn to ride a bike would... would lose a slight bit of dignity if they're bumping into things. It's not to do with necessary disability, is that? Or... Uh, no, you're right, just falling off a bike, absolutely. But uh, there's a difference in that I am an adult yeah. on a, yeah. a child's Petra. trike yeah. and I can't even turn a corner. Um, Biscuit. Yeah, I, th I think that, that thing of, bit of, of having a bit of like having a, an end goal in mind and being clear about why you're doing something, um, and I think sometimes dignity... Sometimes dignity is overrated in that it can it can get in the way of you doing things exactly. that are better for you. Um, but yeah, I do. I definitely relate to that. That was my moment Petra. of the month. A nice moment. Cats. Nice See, moment. Best, do you have a moment? Cats. Well, kind of. Is it? Is it? It's. It's. Um. It's, uh, as I said in the intro, Petra. Simon Minty, you had um, a fantastic profile piece Petra. in the Guardian. Um, yeah, the pa newspaper. 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 Um, and it was great. It was you were talking about the podcast yeah, and, and other things, but show, yeah. Yeah, and about the show. And I somehow kind of was le kind of felt left out of that a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we can laugh about it now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was it was just an interesting the way the, the take on it, and I understand Petra. where they were coming from. But it was kind of a kind of a reversed fee, uh, fee, because we always had this thing with abnormally funny people that that we have this Petra. token non-disabled person to have a certain point Petra. of view, yeah. which is. Um, a non-disabled point of view of what's going on, yeah. Hello. And, and you mentioned it, and it was all all about that in this in in, in that sense. And yet it, they Petra. didn't mention they mentioned it, but didn't mention me by name, which is quite strange. And it's it, it's sort of Petra. not the first time, is it? Because uh, we've done a few Petra. things, and they get a little bit excited about me. And Steve is a very polite, Petra. humble, non-showy, offy type of person. Petra. So you thank you very much. 
could quite naturally, bearing in mind you're a stand-up comedian, there is a contradiction there, but but, but you could naturally step back. But the bit that's happened to you when we've had television Petra. documentaries, when the people Cats. are writing articles, somehow you get bumped out or you you become less, and you're a co-founder of the show, you're the Petra. co-host of this, you're, you've been integral to a part of abnormally funny people all the way through. Which in itself, in a, in a way, what you would have thought is interesting, it's not a very good word, but it is kind of a, a story. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, nice and interesting. <laughs> the fact that, that, you know, we've known each other for, for a long time from school and we built this up and we've come from different angles into this um, and yet you know, that's part of what we are. And yet, it, 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 and it's, it's half of what we are in that sense. It's a similar issue that, that I've had. I co-founded Tourette Zero with um, my colleague Matthew Poutney, who's, a, who's non-disabled, and I um, co-wrote our show Backstage and, and co-developed our show Backstage in Dis- Biscuit Land with Jess Mabel Jones, who's an amazing puppeteer and performer, and with Matthew. Is she with Beauty Biscuit. and the Beast? Yes, with, yeah. yes Matt but, Frazier, um, yeah. Biscuit, but with, with articles, it tends to focus on me yeah. as a performer. And part of that is because Tourette's is central to our show and, and central to Tourette's here, and it makes sense for me to um, spe- you know, sp- Biscuit speak about my experiences and speak about Tourette's. But I think there is something in Biscuit, the fact that in how disability is packaged sometimes, in that... That, sh- that in terms of in in within media maybe that it's easier to be like this is a story about uh, a confident you know articulate disabled person achieving all this stuff and doing all this stuff. Well, they and didn't actually, do that either. Though. <laughs> and 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 well, like talking he about how people come together to in an inclusive way to make amazing things happen. Yes. Can biscuit can be a more complicated story. I agree. To I think I perhaps... think that it was a it, it was Petra. a simpler approach and, and yeah. easier for Petra. for their readers although you Cat. know readers are clever enough to get yeah. what's going on but I Petra. think that it, that's the kind of piece they wanted to portray a lot of the time. But that's but there aren't true. loads there aren't loads of things about how that how, how that about how those partnerships, collaborations, and create and creative processes come about. There's not that's not a story that you see very often because it's not you know, simple or doesn't fall into the way that things are traditionally want, portrayed. Yeah. And I and I think what's amazing is is that that that, that that that's still happening. People are still coming together, disabled and non disabled people and doing really interesting stuff. But um it's a shame that perhaps that some of those nuances get missed when things are presented. <laughs> So, Jess, uh, we have given you our product and... Weapon, we, uh, forward slash weaponry. You it's... did warn me. I, I gave <laughs> it to you and you said, um, is it going to be something that I can hit people with? It wasn't a suggestion, you were just worried that you might happen to do that. But you've been, yeah. able, well, so far so good. Uh, Hedgehog. Could you describe <laughs> Jousting. it? Jousting. Biscuit, well, it looks a bit like a lightsaber, as uh, is the... Is the first step. if we're yes. allowed, you know, if we're allowed to mention that. First. Of course, you are Star Wars. Let's get Star Wars, motherfucker. Hedgehog. Um, so it's got a see-through tube. It's got a ha- handle at one end that's uh, that's heavier, and there's a switch, which I know if you. Oh wow! Let's get sounds like a dustbuster, which is basically it's a, it's a little Hoover. Um, but not powerful enough to pick up bubble wrap, as I as I discovered <laughs> when I was experimenting with it. It's got a cap at the end, which you can undo, and it is for hoovering up insects. <laughs> um, it's it's pretty straightforward in that that's what it does. Although the description of it, um, Biscuit gives quite detailed instructions as to how to approach different types of insect, whether they are spiders or crawling insects or flying insects so there are you know biscuit you do need a bit of an induction biscuit um but essentially it is um it's for the idea is that you hoover them up yeah you put the cap on yeah and then you take them outside and let them go biscuit um i wouldn't have said that this was something that i would have loads of use for although i actually wrote a whole blog post about in the middle of the night when my my um, support worker was asleep, when my sister actually was supporting me that night and she was asleep and didn't really want to wake her up and there was a a huge big bug um, next Mm. to my bed and I was like, am I going to be able, and I just get, am I going to be able to put this in something and carry it outside without dropping it 
um, crawling along the floor um, in the middle of the night. Um, and this would have been quite useful at that point. I'd just read... Um, what did you do? What did well, you do? I actually, <laughs> I'd, just, I'd just read a book by sort of wobbly actress Francesca Martinez, yes. uh, what, uh, what the Fuck is Normal? And I'd been reading it before, just before this happened, and she'd just told a bully... Um, to get lost and so I was feeling particularly inspired so yeah. I um I tackled the creature myself Biscuit in the morning I suddenly realised that I wasn't sure whether it actually really existed or whether I'd hallucinated the whole thing <laughs> it was a um, big sultan or something <laughs> but um but yeah it, this would have would have somewhat um solve the problem although for me i've got very poor limb control and this would probably have ended up waking my sister when i, I was hitting it against <laughs> the radiators and walls on the way out it's the perfect length for me and uh, i should a... tell people it, yes it's called a bug buster, a bug buster. you said uh, it's humane it's a, it's a humane spider catcher that really works simply point it at the Hedgehog spider <laughs> This is where it gets a bit weird. Press the button and wham! Uh, yeah, I'm like, okay, the spider is sucked up safe in the tube. You tip it upside down outside and off it goes. They, exactly they really emphasise the speed with which the spider yes. get, gets, uh, uh, gets sucked up. Um, there is, the, the speed is described in several different ways, um, uh, but it's obviously quite quick. But we again, like with the eggs, we haven't had a chance to test this with a real we got a spider, spider or here. fly. Which it's too cold um, for spiders. Very clean this year. Yeah, I've, 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 I heard September was a good spider was a good spider month, but I've um, but, I was looking around and so didn't find any. There's, there's, a, there's a little thing there's you a, can add to it. Not that that's the oh, lid, little, but there's um, little suction tips for smaller ones. I think as well. You can add bits to for it. Ants. Yeah, it's like you know the Hoover. We can add attachments. I, a bit, can you do one for a hippopotamus? It, it was a small hippopotamus, it's, it's a light. An industrial yes. sucking. Uh, it's humane, isn't it? That's it's, the point. It's, it's, it's humane. It's, um, and for some people, it's going to work. It's going to work really well. And particularly if you're if you're not fond of spiders, or I'm not particularly bothered by them. So there's I don't, a lot of people who are not fond of spiders. It's 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 definitely going to. But that's, that's true. I've I mean, got a few friends. Yeah, yeah, no, a lot of people Hello. really don't like the spiders. Yes. But but I like the, but people just tend to kill them. I like the idea of you not killing them. You could also use it for joust. Thing. This is what I was going to say. What else can you use it for? Any other ideas? <laughs> biscuit, for sp spinning an egg. You could, biscuit, you could use it for stirring a pot of butter. You could, yes. you know what you biscuit, could do? You, if you, could crack... use it for mil you could use it for milking Mother Teresa's horse. <laughs> you, could, you, you could use it for masturbating a tortoise. There we go. I think all of those. <laughs> but if you, I, you could actually combine that with the egg, and if you if you spill a bit of that shell accidentally, if that doesn't work, it's then you could suck up the bit of shell it, in the really, bug buster. It really isn't that powerful. It's a bit of shell. It? For my glasses. Yeah, it's, no. it's not even going to be the paper. Okay, so it's got to be quite light, isn't it? Uh, that's the, uh, the point. Oh, so if, if there was improvements, anything you would suggest if you wanted to tweak it a bit? Um, biscuit, go faster stripes and a pair of dungarees. That's what the tips are <laughs> suggesting. That would look nice. But, um, Hedgehog, um... But you've Maybe. got a point there about Biscuit. about about the, the the strength of it. If you were, it's not very good for someone in Australia or, or South America <laughs> with a big tarantula, big old spider. It's not going like to do that, is it? Yeah, different power modes depending yeah. power settings depending on your on the country that you're operating. Wonder in. if um, what's that company? Uh, what's the big Hoover company that's Cats. got the uh, Dyson? Dyson. One of Dyson will come out with a bug. Bug buster. Yep, yeah, don't forget there is that word humane we still want to keep, so they're not humane. sort of sucked into some sort of violent yes. hurricane and yeah, just yeah, yeah. all their limbs fall yeah. off as they go up. I Black think. hole bug buster. I, mean, uh, I feel like it's probably a fairly a fairly niche area, I think. Um I think <coughs> it's it's great that a product like that exists for some people, but I don't think that I don't think it's gonna be an area that well, there's gonna be lots of I agree with I think the products we always have they're they're sort of aimed at something very specific. They're, yeah. they're sort of their inventions that you sometimes don't realise you need it solving. But once you use them you go, Oh, there's an idea yeah, yeah. and that's exactly it. But uh this would Hedge cost you twelve pounds. Um Cats. if you were giving it a, a rating out of ten, um what would you score this? Six as a six if it was a velociraptor velociraptor's udder. Um yeah, prob probably six. Six is even good. even as, as a non velociraptor udder. You know what we didn't do was ask Lawrence. So could Cats. you give another score pretending you're Lawrence but not doing his voice and <laughs> no. we get in trouble? Let's get Lawrence. <laughs> um, Lawrence Lawrence would uh, uh, certainly give it eighty two point two. He would probably he would probably give it seven because he's a more generous scorer than me as we discovered in the last round. See best. I, I I'm going to give it eight. I think I, th I actually quite like it. Nine. Not that much. Eight. 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 <laughs> Nine, eight, ten, <laughs> forty-two. Okay, nine. I'm adding all these up now. It's got... What's your pin number? Uh... Hello, <laughs> six. Two, uh, I don't I've know what to two, give one. it now because you've given suggested so many numbers. I've got a bit confused. Eight. 
Yes, eight. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Jess, it's been lovely, lovely having you on the oh, program this 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 here. month. And um, what are you doing in the next month? Um, day? Biscuit. Well, biscuit. I'm. Um, I am. Um, Having a bit of a rep, bit of a break. We just finished a run of shows at Battersea Arts Centre, which, which was amazing. Um, uh, but we, um, I'm going to be at Dada Fest in December as well, and Brilliant. doing a show in St Helen's Library, Biscuit, um, in which is in Merseyside, um, in October. Biscuit, don't you have to be quiet in a library. Well, Biscuit, that was a, it was a gig that I was not going to turn down. It's not very often as someone with Tourette's I get in, invited to, <laughs> exactly. invited to the library. So um, that's that's I'm really excited about that, um, Biscuit, and then um, Hedgehog. Uh, yeah, more. I write that you'll see more from Tourette's Hero, uh, dot com over the next, uh, uh, and hopefully we'll do a um, some stuff in the run up to Christmas. Um, and yeah, watch out for me. Um, watch out for me on Channel Four because I've been doing some continuity biscuit announcing the links between programs, and hopefully biscuit. I'll be back doing some of that um, this autumn. Very cool. Uh, I, biscuit. We we didn't quite nail. There was a bit about I love Lawrence's Hedgehog. blog when he, you came to the show and so on. And I know you've had experiences going Hedgehog. to other people's shows and from our conversation, you normally let them know and so on. Hedgehog. I've heard of something called relaxed performances. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now, for me, this is so anyone can go. If they make noises, it's all OK. It's a bit, for me, it's a bit like the British Sign Language thing. But my worry about them, I love the idea, but my worry is, does that mean you can go once a month in that run and if you can't make that date? So what do you, how do we well, get... That, that, that's my worry. That's my worry too. Um, and I think relaxed performances are only part of the... Part of the answer. Yeah. Um, biscuit. All our shows at Edinburgh relax. Biscuit. Um, um. And I think relaxed performances are really useful. They're part. And when I've been thinking about this recently, I've realised that one of the reasons that they're useful, biscuit, is because it says we have thought about you. We have thought about the fact right. that you might not be able to. That some people might not be able to be quiet or still. And we've put a relaxed performance as part of our run to acknowledge that. Therefore, Biscuit, as some, if I wasn't able to make that date, I would feel more confident about being able to say, I can't make this show, but I would like to come on another day. It doesn't yes. take a lot of extra expense to make a, uh, a show relaxed. All it takes is um, the sort of approach and attitude and knowledge. Um, and uh, therefore, I hope that it would then make people feel more comfortable in explaining their access needs to a venue. Um, I like your point that if they've got one, it shows they've already thought about it. Uh, it annoys me, but I'm going to ask you anyway. The bit of, presumably, we talked about dignity, and uh, presumably you've had a couple of times where have they not treated you appropriately? And I mean, how do you react to that, and how do you get over that? Well, it, 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 it depends. It depends when it's happened, at what point I am... In my life and with my and in confidence, there have been there were biscuit. The I suppose the starting point for our Edinburgh show, um, or essentially to our Edinburgh show, was a very difficult experience I had at um, at a theatre where I was asked to move um, to a sound booth because people were complaining about the noises I was making, just getting threatening not to come back. And that was a show where the performer was very on side, mm. where he'd explained at the start um, that I was in the audience and that I'd done everything I could yeah. to to make that work um, and so when it didn't um, I was gutted and I absolutely sobbed um, and I in that moment vowed never to go back to the theatre again and Biscuit I'm very pleased that that's not a that's not a promise that I kept because I've had amazing positive experiences Biscuit um, at loads of their news and theatres as a, you know subsequently um, but for me personally my Biscuit what I always do is speak to the person the performer and the theatre beforehand and I feel like conversations are this get are a really important part of making it work and I think with any access being open about what you need and this get and being clear about how you want them to respond if certain things happen and um, is important and um, but even Biscuit. you are clearly confident your show is around this the, all of those things but I've, I've had it we go back to planes Petrol. but sometimes when I've been treated so way it, it really knocks you mm. I mean you can be the com most confident Petrol. person in the world but then something happens and you know that's disability related and poor so yeah. and just inside you're like Petrol. I don't know maybe it's you, you can keep it all strong all the time but then just one thing just Biscuit. tips it but that's that's all, that's also why particularly particularly with cultural spaces it's like a week biscuit in addition to the show um that we did this uh, the, 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 taking the show to edinburgh as Tourette's, we also ran an event in partnership with Tate Britain called we forgot the lot which was a big children's event which was about again another about reclaiming the sort of cultural space there and giving access to children who might not feel and families who might not feel confident accessing those spaces um aladdin thank you so Cash. much
uh, Aladdin alike. <laughs> uh, uh, if you do get a chance to see Jesse, you said where it's going. Uh, I've heard nothing but amazing stuff, Hedrick. and I'm really annoyed that I haven't seen you perform properly. Uh, but I've just heard awesome things. Just uh, yes, so, Hedrick. thank you so much. Cool. Thank you very thank much you. for coming. Yes, thank you very much. Lovely. Cat, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the most exciting bit of the show, the thing that gets all of you listeners excited, it's competition time. We're going to offer each of today's items as its own prize. So to win, you need to contact us with your answer to the following sentence. I want the because. So I want the bug buster because or I want the egg cracker because. Both great products, they were. I Very thought. good. Yeah. Um, if you want to enter the competition or if you just want to say hello to us, here are the ways you can contact us. Email is podcast at abnormally funny people. We're on Twitter if you search for abnormally funny people. And if you prefer, you can even call and leave a voicemail or send us a text. The telephone number 07756 190 561. I'll do that one more time 07756 190 561. If you didn't get it all down, go to our website, abnormallyfunnypeople.com, and all the information will be there. Unfortunately, at this point, we can only send the prizes to people in the UK. Uh, Debbie knows that, as her item is on its way. If you're listening overseas, welcome, but sorry. Closing date for this month is Monday the 20th of October. And in our next show, which will be our fifth podcast, we're going to announce the winner, or hopefully winners. Come on, Debbie, do it again, you're on a roll. Drop us a line with your thoughts and comments. We'd love to hear from you. You can get hold of us via email, podcast at abnormallyfunnypeople.com. And as we've said, our website, abnormallyfunnypeople.com, has got all the social media links, telephone numbers. It'll have photos of the show as well. A big thank you goes to really useful stuff who supply the items. You can check out what they do via their website, reallyuselstuff.co. And so you don't miss us, do subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, or if you prefer to stream it, Audio Boo is the place to go. A big thank you, finally, to our producer, Anne. Thank you very much, Anne, and thanks for listening. <laughs>